Good morning. Welcome to Fort Walton Beach First United Methodist. It is so good to see you uh, here on this fourth Sunday of Easter, a day where we also celebrate our mothers. So mothers, uh, happy Mother's Day. Uh, we love you. Uh, we are glad that you, you know, gave us life. Um, that you kept us around, uh, nurtured us, and, uh, and fed us, and took care of us in so many ways that, that uh, you really don't understand unless you are, uh, unless you are a, a mother. Uh, we, we say thank you uh, to those, uh, those of you who uh, today isn't as happy of a day. Maybe mothering didn't go the way that you thought it would go. Maybe your children aren't, uh, aren't here with you today and you're worried for them. I want you to know that we pray with you. Uh, for those of you who weren't able to have children of your own and yet you mothered others, we see you and we appreciate you. Uh, mothering means so many different things. And I'm aware as a pastor uh, that this morning it comes with great joy and great excitement. It can also come with difficulty and pain. And that's what we bring all to our whole selves to this place today. We're not here to put on faces and act a certain way. We are here to bring our whole selves mind, body, soul, and spirit to God and to worship Him together. So it is good that we can be here on this day. My name is Dave Barkelow. I'm the pastor here at Fort Walton Beach First United Methodist, and we'd just like to welcome you and introduce to you a mother, Kathy Wyatt, uh, who is our director of children's ministries. She's going to share what's going on in our congregation and how you can be involved. Now, wait a second. The best part about being mm. mom is the Gigi part, so... <laughs> So, um, okay, so our announcements this week, when you came in, you did get a bulletin um, in there. That white card is our Connect card. If you'll please let us know that you are here with us this morning. Um, on the back side at the top, you can check off if you're going to join us for dinner 
on Wednesday night at 5 o'clock, and then at 6 o'clock we'll have some small groups and Bible study. Um, this week's meal is spaghetti and meatballs, so come join us for that. Also a reminder, Tuesday, uh, the first friends will be going to the Crestview Zoo. Um, they leave here at 10, right? Okay, it's in your bulletin. I think it's 10. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and then uh, one extra reminder, June the 12th, we will have one service here in the sanctuary at 10 o'clock. Uh, the children will be performing their musical, What's Up, Zach, about Zacchaeus. And uh, then after that, in the fellowship hall, we will have a farewell um, luncheon for the Barcolos. So please plan on joining us that morning, but just remember, there's only one service, June the 12th. Thank you. The Lamar Brown First Friend is, leaves at 9 a.m. from the church. Uh, I, just, I just opened my bulletin, that's all. So... Uh, and I'd like to share that the Emmaus and Chrysalis Ministries have restarted at Blue Lake. Ooh. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> to kick things off, the Blue Lake Board of Directors, or the, Blue, the uh, Emmaus Board of Directors at Blue Lake, is inviting everyone to a picnic on the grounds this coming Saturday, May 14th, starting at noon. Please bring a covered dish and something to drink. Bring a lawn chair because our plan is to hold this outside. Uh, as a backup, we do have Oakwood Gym reserved, so if there is rain, we will go inside. This is a time to gather together in fellowship. We will worship together, we will have a service of remembrance and singing and sharing and communion. So we invite all of you to come to the Emmaus Gathering this coming Saturday, May 14th at the Blue Lake Grounds. Thank you. Thank you, Lockwood. That is very exciting to hear. Glad to know about that. Finally, uh, in your bulletin, you should find a little business card sized thing. If it didn't fall out, we were very worried about them falling out between the narthex and your pew. Uh, so you might be able to pick them up uh, on your way out uh, if that happened. But it is a, a little business card. It's simply an invitation. It says, uh, join us for a great day, a place for you to put your name. This is a, a way to invite someone to come to church. We are in our 50 day, uh, great 50-day challenge where we believe God is bringing people into membership here, uh, are bringing new people into our community here at Fort Walton Beach First United Methodist. And maybe you know someone who might be interested in coming, uh, but you don't have a good way of, uh, you know, of getting their service times and address and all that good kind of stuff, well, here you are, right here. Uh, this card, it has the service times, it has, a, uh, it has the, the address on it, they can look at our website, and you can write your name right there, hand it to someone and say, I will join you at the 830 service, or I'll meet you at the 11 o'clock, however uh, it works for you uh, and for them. I encourage you to use these and invite people into what God is doing here at Fort Walton Beach First United Methodist. Now that we're here, now that we are gathered, let's take a moment. Remind ourselves that we are in God's presence. Let's bring our whole selves to worship this morning.
Morning. Morning. Our hymn of praise this morning is Blessed Assurance. It's found in the Red Pew Hymnal. It's number 369. The words will also be projected on the screen. Let's stand together and sing all three verses. Please remain standing as we read um, the Apostles' Creed, our affirmation of faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day, he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. If you'll join me in prayer this morning. Father, we come to you this morning with thankful hearts, thankful that you woke us up, you put breath in our lungs, you've given us the freedom to worship you this morning in this space. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Open our hearts and our minds to hear your word. Let our worship this morning be pleasing to you. Long ago, faithful women proclaimed the good news of Jesus' resurrection, and the world was changed forever. Teach us to keep faith like them, that our witness may be bold, and our love is deep, and our faith is true. Lord, we pause this morning to thank you for all the mothers, the new mothers who endure, who endure sleepless nights with infants in their arms, 
for the busy ones who juggle the pressures of home and family life, for the steadfast ones who nurture and care for our special vulnerable children, for the patient ones who always seek to forgive and engage with their preteens, for the persistent ones who cleverly find new ways to connect with their many adults, for the mother aunts who step in to cradle and care for their nieces and nephews, for all the grandmas who love and support their precious grandchildren, for the foster moms that are called to gather and cover the fragile ones, for the Sunday moms who care for our children and lead them in their faith, and for the moms who give far beyond their own resources, who overcome disability to cherish and love. Sisters and brothers in Christ, God invites us to bring our doubts, our fears, our joys, our concerns, our petitions and our praise. We lift those to you now, Father. We ask that you cover our first responders and our military. Lord, keep them safe and bring them home to their families. We lift to you those who are hurting, lonely, struggling. And as we enter into another week that you have given us, let our light, our light shine for you in all that we do, in all that we think, and all that we say. You sent your son to die on a cross to forgive us. Let us forgive those who need forgiving this week. And as your children, we pray the prayer you taught your disciples to pray so very long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Lead us not to temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us continue to worship through the giving of our tithes and offerings. Would the ushers please come forward? I want to remind you again, you can give online electronically if you want, with our app or our church website. We have a lot planned for you, our church family. With the last day of school just right around the corner, yay. <laughs> This Tuesday, the senior adult ministry are going to Crestview. We heard about that earlier. Then uh, we're going to go to the zoo and then go to uh, and have a picnic. The children's ministry is planning a musical for our worship time on the 12th. You also heard about that. Followed by the goodbye luncheon for the Barcolos. The following week, they're hosting VBS with Trinity and Mary Esther UMC right here in our house. The youth ministry will be on mid-high trip to Orlando the first week of June followed by their high school mission trip, yes, the same week as VBS. In July, they will each be going to summer camp, not to mention the various other ministries and activities that they have planned. And we have our Freedom Festival planned this year. We're going to go back to our old schedule and try to do everything that we've done before. So this can only be done with our church family and through your support. Thank you. Please give as God lays on your heart. Our Heavenly Father, accept these gifts and ourselves in your service always in every season as we speak this prayer to you now in gratitude and praise for the gift of mothers. Thank you for the role they play in the family. Thank you for their teachings, their wisdom, their patience and understanding. Thank you for the physical, emotional and spiritual gifts they possess. We pray that you will help mothers all across the world to be a blessing upon their children, whether delivering affirmation or discipline. We pray that you help every word and every action be done in love. And we pray that children throughout the world would take time to honor their mothers, that you would show them how to uniquely do so. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen.
Our next hymn this morning is Marching to Zion, number 733 in your pew hymnal, words also on the screen. Let's sing all four verses. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Hear the word of the Lord from the book of John, chapter 10, verses 20 through through 30. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, Tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me. But you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The word of God for the people of God. God. I used to hate roller coasters. Okay, that's not a way to start a sermon, I admit. But just hang with me. 
when I was young, a little kid, even into like junior high, I hated roller coasters. And that was kind of a bummer because when I got into junior high, uh, my church, we went on choir tour every summer. And we would go to different areas. We went to Cincinnati and D.C. and Texas. And we'd go to different areas and we'd put on a, a production of different musicals, you know, about Jesus or around it. And do Bible, do a Bible schools uh, in different places. We did a, a Bible school, a VBS uh, one year in inner city uh, Chicago. And we would always work in a trip to an amusement park. Usually, it may sometimes also a, a water park. I like those better. Uh, but we'd go to the amusement park, and I, I had a good time. I'd be with my friends, and we'd, we'd, we'd pal around, and we'd eat, we'd eat all the food that, you know, you buy at an amusement park. But, but when they'd get on a roller coaster, they'd get in line, and I'd sit on the side. I hated all that waiting in line, all that anxiety-producing sounds of click, 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 clickings. And, 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 and the, the, the people, you, you know, you, you move slowly through these cattle trough-like areas and uh, marching on your way to a thing that's going to take you slowly up a hill, then rip your stomach out on the way down. Um, and I just, I, it was just not my thing. It just, it, the suspense just got to me. I couldn't take it. I didn't like it. And so my friends would ride the roller coasters and I would wait for them and it was fine. Now, somewhere, something happened around high school, and it really wasn't finished, honestly, probably until I had my own kids. But I love roller coasters now. I love that feeling of getting in line, and you're not quite sure how it's going to go. And of watching all the little things that, that are out there, watching the people who are nervous and, and shifting, talking to, to my friends or my family as, as we're waiting there, that, that suspense that instead of being anxiety is now excitement for some reason. And so now I love roller coasters. And I'm so lucky because pretty much all my kids love roller coasters too. Uh, so uh, it's great. Even Safira, who's six years old, uh, her favorite thing in the world is a roller coaster. Um, and so we ride those. And I watch in my children as we're standing in line. The suspense doesn't cause them anxiety and fear rather in them is excitement looking forward to what's going to happen even if a little bit scary I mean they're a little scared I'm still a little scared if I'm honest right but we are excited about what's going to happen here these people come to Jesus and they say do not keep us in suspense the suspense that they are feeling is not excitement it is fear the suspense they are feeling is not wonder of what is going to happen, but rather fear of what is going to happen. They are anxious about this upstart rabbi from Nazareth named Jesus. They are worried about what he is saying, about what he is doing, about the different things going on in his ministry. There, there, are, something, there, are, there are all these people who have fallen in line behind him, and they are standing on the outside going, that ride's not for us. Who are you? What are you doing? Don't keep us in suspense. The suspense you're keeping us in, Jesus of Nazareth, it is causing us fear and anxiety. Who are you? What are you doing? And I can almost imagine Jesus just staring at them for a minute. We're in John chapter 10, y'all. We've got 10 chapters of Jesus' ministry going on. And Jesus says, what are you talking about? I have told you plainly. And the works I do, that I do in my Father's name, testify to me. Jesus points not just to what he said, but to what he has done, to his works. We have ten chapters of Jesus' ministry so far. It, just the previous chapter, chapter 9, Jesus heals a man who was born blind. A man who had never had sight, is all of a sudden able to see, and the religious leaders don't like it because it was done on the Sabbath. And it causes a big old stir. That never happens in churches anymore, does it? Never big old stirs over anything, you know. Um, it causes a big old stir. This man born blind gets his sight back on the Sabbath. How dare this Jesus heal someone when he's supposed to be taking the day off? And they asked the man born blind, it's a whole chapter, go, go read it, it's amazing, the whole story. But at the end, the man born blind says, 
no one has ever given sight to the blind before. And, you know, I, I never really thought of that before, but I thought, you know, God's always showing up and doing things in the Scriptures. You, Genesis, he shows up and creates everything. He's, he's, he's uh, showing up to Abraham and to Jacob, his, you know, uh, stairway from a he- ladder from heaven to earth for Jacob. And, and in Moses, you got all kinds of miracles, water from rocks and bread falling down at night and quail being driven in for, for them to, to eat. And, uh, and, and he stops the River Jordan for Joshua and for Elijah. And people are coming back from the dead and axe handles are floating. I mean, God has been doing miracles from the very beginning, right? Isn't it odd that in all of that, no blind person's sight has ever been restored in the Scriptures? All those miracles, all those healings, never once has sight been restored to a blind man until Jesus. You see, that was a prophecy about the Messiah. The Old Testament says that he is the one who will give sight to the blind. And so Jesus, in giving sight to this blind man, is saving this blind man's life in many ways. He loves this blind man. He wants him to be able to see. But he's also making a statement. He's also saying plainly, I am the Messiah. In chapter 6, Jesus fed the 5,000. He took those two loaves of bread, those uh, two fish and five loaves of bread, and broke them up and fed 5,000 people. And when he got done with that, he went walking on water. Who else fed a lot of people in the desert, the wilderness, with bread? Oh, that was God, wasn't it? When the Israelite children were wandering around in the wilderness after the Exodus, bread, manna fell every night and he fed them. Who else hovered over water? But God, when God created the heavens and the earth in Genesis chapter 1, Do you see how what Jesus is doing is referring back to the Old Testament Scriptures, making it plain who he truly is? In chapter 4, he heals an official's son without even seeing him. An official comes and seeks Jesus out and says, My son is near death at home. And actually, while they're standing there, servants arrive and tell him, Your son is already dead. And Jesus says, No, he's not. Go home. Your son is fine. And sure enough, when the official gets there, His son is fine. He has authority over even death at a distance. And of course, chapter 2, his first miracle, he turns water into wine. He is sovereign over all creation. He controls it all. And of course, Jesus is teaching in between all those signs. And yes, he does make claims to be the Messiah, Think back to chapter 3 when the religious leader Nicodemus comes to Jesus and Jesus says that you must be born again to enter into eternal life. And it's very puzzling to Nicodemus. He has no idea what he's talking about. Jesus puts it plainly, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus is the son of Jesus is the one who's been sent that we all may have eternal life when we believe in his name. In chapter 4, Jesus is sitting by a well in Samaria. And a woman comes out to draw water. And he asks her for a drink of water. And she's, are you talking to me? You, you, you talking, you're a man. I'm a woman. You're a Jew. I'm a Samaritan. We should, we, we should not be having this conversation And Jesus says, if you know to whom you are speaking, you would be asking me for living water. Who gives living water but God? And in fact, Jesus makes such an impression on this woman that she goes in, she finds everyone who will listen to her and brings them out to listen to his teaching, saying, could he be the Messiah? In chapter 5, he calls himself the Son of God. When again, he heals on the Sabbath. In chapter 6, he calls himself the bread of life that comes down from heaven. In chapter 7, he teaches openly in the temple. You can see why I think Jesus might have just stared at these people when they're like, tell us plainly if you are the Messiah. Yes, he is the Messiah. And he has through his works and through his words, told us plainly who he truly is. 
These people should not be asking him uh, questions. They, they shouldn't be worried about, they shouldn't be letting the suspense of who Jesus is keep them in fear and anxiety. Rather, they should be getting in line with the other people who are following Jesus because their suspense is not keeping them in fear and anxiety. Their expense is keeping them in excitement and wonder of what will happen. There are all these people following Jesus because they truly believe that he is the Messiah. There are all these people who have heard these words, who have seen these wonders, who aren't who are freaked out by them but are excited by them because they have seen Jesus work in their lives. They have seen Jesus heal. They have seen Jesus teach. They have noticed the way he treats other people. And they say, I want to be part of that. I don't know where it's going. I don't know what it'll cost me. I don't know how it'll end up, but I want to be part of that. Oh, come on, y'all. We all dead this morning. I weren't even smiling, dear, and blessed assurance. I knew I was up for it then. I was like, I'm going to have to get up here and get real excited. Are we excited? Are we a little bit in suspense about what God is doing in our lives? Sorry. Poor kid. He didn't know he was getting screamed at this morning. Sorry. I love you, Forrest. Are we excited about what God is doing? Or are we maybe in a little suspense because we don't always know what God is doing. We don't always know what's happening. We, we put our faith and our trust in God and, and God does not give us a blueprint back. Or are we anxious? Are we fearful because we're not sure what God I- is doing? Are we like these people? Or are we like the sheep? Or like the sheep that Jesus talks about here who know his voice and who follow him. Sheep will follow a shepherd anywhere. Sheep hear the shepherd's voice and will follow, them, will follow the shepherd out into the wilderness. Will follow the shepherd across the fjords of water. Will follow the, the shepherd anywhere when they know his voice. Do we know the shepherd's voice? Do we hear him speaking to us? Because life will it cause us suspense. It comes in different forms. It may come in a sudden loss of job, the sudden diagnosis of a sickness. It may come in some good way, sudden inheriting of money or sudden change of fortune. It, it may come in, in, in ways that we, don't, that we don't understand right now, but we do know that God is with us. And how will we handle it when God calls us? It may come through a change in life situation. It may come in the change of a relationship. It may come in the change of a pastor. But do we trust the shepherd? Do we let the suspense not sideline us? I mean, that's my tendency. When I get anxious and worried, I tend to want to step out. I tend to want to heckle those who are willing to go forward in the middle of it all like these people did to Jesus, but yet Jesus calls us to hear his voice and to follow, to get in line. We are in suspense, yes. There, is, there are moments where we don't know what God is doing or where Jesus is leading us, but do we trust the shepherd? Will we follow? And will we let the suspense not create in us fear and anxiety, but let the suspense create in us excitement? And wonder. Friends, together, let us be excited for all that God is doing in our lives, in the lives of of each individual person and family here, in the lives of of Fort Walton Beach, the community, in the lives of our church, in the lives of Christians all around the world. Because there are places today that have been meeting all day long. Y'all really? All day long. Since it turned Sunday, somewhere in the world, Christians have been gathering for worship. We're part of that today. Let the suspense drive into us excitement and wonder at all that God is doing. Let us wonder at all the gifts that God has given us. Let us come to his table today knowing that he meets us here, knowing that that we find our, our place in him, knowing that I hope we come to this place excited. I hope we come to this table knowing that Christ will meet us here in such a way that is good and true and meaningful for you and for me. 
I hope you're in a little bit of suspense now. And I hope it lets you hear the shepherd's voice all the clearer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you would join me in our invitation, confession, and pardon. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Would you please stand in body and spirit as you are able and join me in the great thanksgiving, the blessing that we offer over our meal here together. If you'd like to join in uh, in the hymnal, it is on page 13. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body that is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant that is poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this as often as you will in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. May them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. If at the usher's direction you will make your way by the center aisle, there will be four stations, uh, one here along the altar against the modesty rail there, and on the same on this, same on this side. Uh, once, uh, once you've come and been given, you may kneel at the altar and pray as long as you like, and then return, by the, then return by the side aisles. If anyone has a gluten sensitivity, we do have gluten-free wafers on the altar. Simply let us know, and we will get, we will get one of those uh, for you. If those who are assisting would come forward at this time. The table is set. Let us keep the feast.
Our final hymn this morning is number 381, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us. Let's sing the first and last verses together. During this great 50 days, we're inviting anyone who'd like to, to come and to join our church, uh, to join uh, with what God is doing here, uh, to get a little, a little suspenseful, a little excited about what God is doing. If you'd like to come and, and join the line, get in line with us as we follow Jesus, I would invite you to meet me uh, down front here in the sanctuary during our final uh, hymn, Savior Like a Shepherd, Lead Us.